Welcome, this is Danny Knox from Parallels Software. This is the Parallels Mac Management for Microsoft Endpoint Management version nine deep dive demo. Wanted to welcome you all here today. If you're looking for ways to manage Mac endpoints within Configuration Manager, this is the right demo, right? We're looking for ways that will simplify what we do, not make it harder, <laughs> right? I mean, who wants to do that? You know, do you want another console? Do you want to have to flip your support team and, you know, divide resources, you know, that's what a lot of the other folks do when it comes to Mac management in a Windows centric environment. That's really the key point here, right? If you have a Windows shop, if you're 95, 98% Windows and you're looking for ways to make it easier in your day-to-day -day, uh, workflows, you know, take a look at us. Let's see what we can do. Um, so that's that's basically what we're gonna be looking at over the next hour are ways that you can um, leverage the uh, infrastructure that you already have. You've already invested in a lot of Microsoft technology uh, and it's, you know, because you manage Windows endpoints, right? So that's, that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So deep dive demo, about 300 level, you know, we're gonna be moving pretty quickly, trying to get to the end of the hour. Uh, if you do have questions, comments, concerns, throw those into the chat window. We'll get to those probably towards the end of the demo. Uh, try to get through a lot of stuff here. If I see something I can answer relatively quickly, I'll try to do so, you know, kind of when I'm doing it here uh, live. But if not, then um, I will catch uh, the questions, the QA portion towards the very end. Okay. Um, I think that's probably enough of that business. We have some slides to get through. Not that many. I'm, I, um, I, I promise it won't be death by PowerPoint, uh, but there are a few things I'd like to cover before we get it into the actual um, kind of virtual machine. So this this is a live demo. I, I am a real person. This isn't AI. Um, you know, you didn't dial into a recorded, you know, hour long infomercial. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll try to keep it, you know, real here today. Um, so, yeah, if you've heard of us before, if you haven't, uh, Parallels has been around for a while. We were some of the first, um, companies, maybe the first to put Windows onto a Mac without rebooting it um, way back when, right? When Intel, it's kind of full cycle, right? Intel is leaving and the, the Mac Silicon is coming in, right? So when Intel was coming in, um, that was pretty cool. You know, people thought, all right, you know, maybe we're going to see some some cool things happen. We jumped right on that. We saw that we could run a virtual machine on top of the OS instead of rebooting it right cool boot camp is cool i mean that's just hands down cool that you could you know run windows on a on the hardware without you know seeing anything else right you just boot it and you're it's the fastest way to boot windows into you know the windows operating system but you're not really able to get to the mac resources so we thought well running virtual machine on top of the 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 mac os that's pretty cool drag drop cut and paste you know everything you need to do on both platforms at the same time so um, that's pretty much what our uh, parallels desktop for mac is all about over 100 different operating systems you can run on a mac uh, so developers really love it you know they can do all their visual studio um, we've got you know some really cool stuff for visual studio um that's you know that makes it a lot easier for developers uh, but just you know common you know day-to-day -day, either business education consumers you know they like to have different windows apps so that's a cool one the next one there parallels desktop for chrome os enterprise a relatively new one for us three years in the making came out back in october um heavy investment a heavy partnership with with uh, google in that they were looking for ways um, to extend, like we did, uh, the Windows um, experience on a Chromebook, right? So for education, for business, uh, this is a, a really nice way to, to do what I just talked about for the Mac, right? If you've got Windows apps that you need to run and you want to do so on a Chromebook, that's what this is. I mean, we're so ingrained into uh, the Chrome OS, we are built into the OS. So you don't buy Parallels and download it and, and put it on a Chromebook. It's just baked into Chrome OS. And then through licensing, uh, for education or for enterprise. It's not a consumer edition yet. Um, you can fully manage it through uh, the Google admin console. So it has full granular, you know, OU groups, um, deliver the image a policy. You know, think of Google uh, admin console as an MDM console that you can fully manage that, that desktop. So um, 
i5, i7, and Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7, 8 gigs, uh, I think is the buy-in there. You have to have at least 8 gigs. So we are talking about a, you know, a, a pretty beefy, um, you know, Chrome uh, book that you can, and Chromebox as well. So if you go out to parallels.com under the Chrome um, Chromebook area, it has all the specs and everything on it and all the information. Uh, Parallels Access is our uh, consumer product for getting to any device anywhere, really. If you, you know, have need of getting to a, a laptop, a desktop, you know, your MacBook, uh, Mac Mini, uh, your iPad, or your iPhone, uh, from the web, you can get to it and use it as if you're in front of it. And we, we've got tools in there that make it pretty easy for an iPad or an iPhone, but then, you know, moving the mouse around on the screen, if you've got the other normal traditional form factors, uh, you're going to be able to get to it and do whatever you need to do. Then when it comes to the enterprise, we've got Parallels Remote Application Server or RAS. Um, yeah, VDI solution, SaaS, you know, uh, software as a service. If this sounds kind of like Citrix, it kind of is, except for you don't pay the Citrix tax. So you're not going to have to spend you know, the farm to get the farm, right? I mean, we do have, um, you know, all of the, you know, you know, the major architecture that you need. I mean, everything's built into it. You're not going to get an a la carte. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't, you didn't, you know, spend for, you know, load balancing or whatever. It's all built into this product. So, and it, it really took off during the beginning of the pandemic and a lot of our customers added more seats. A lot of people were looking for ways to, to have a remote environment that they never had before. Uh, so if you're still looking for ways to deliver apps to any form factor, desktops, um, that's what Parallels RAS does. And then at the very end of it, Parallels Toolbox for Windows and Mac. Mac, we've really simplified a lot of the things that you have to hunt and look for and then added a few more uh, in the way of utilities that can be, you know, invoked from the toolbar, right? So if you need to do, you know, screenshots and, you know, um, you know, reduce, you know, the the um, the screen size or enhance it. I mean, there's just so many. There's probably over 30 or 40 different uh, utilities that we've added to this. And then what we're talking about today, of course, is Parallels Mac Management uh, for Configuration Manager. Really trying hard not to say that SCCM anymore because Microsoft doesn't. In fact, little little factoid here: SCCM is actually a medical uh, community. Uh, <laughs> they would prefer nobody says SCCM if, unless you're talking about their Society for blah, 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 you know, a group of medical people, right? They, I mean, there is a SCCM org or something website for these, these medical people. So anyway, that's what we're looking at today, right? All right, so we are now on version nine, had a major upgrade <clears throat> less than a month ago, I, I wanna say, uh, where we brought in some really cool features, enhanced some things. Um, we do major upgrades twice a year, so the product is always under review, revision, taking into account what our customers are asking for, feature requests, that drives a lot of what we do and where we go with the product. Again, we're tied to configuration manager. So if you're doing your due diligence today going, well, okay, what's different about them? How do they compare to other people? You know, you kind of have to flip the question around and ask, what are the other people doing for you in your Microsoft shop? Right? I mean, if, if they really are going to do something different, something better, how does a Windows administrator, how does a Windows environment take in a Mac without blowing up the whole infrastructure to have, you know, multiple support teams that you didn't have before? Because a lot of times people don't factor that into the price of the product, right? They think, oh, yeah, well, this is really cool, but now I'm going to another console. You know, I had to stand up a Mac Mini for SQLite, you know, with Tomcat for a web service on it. And then, oh, no, I, I've got to patch it with this other utility somewhere else. You know, it becomes kind of a split and a divorce of a lot of your resources that you spend a lot of time building. So brand new for us, powerful configuration profile editor. That would be iMazing. We've added the iMazing profile editor to it. So if you need true Mac policy, we can deliver it. Anything that's blessed by Apple in the way of a policy. So think group policy. Well, on the Mac side, you've got mobile config files or profiles. So we built that editor into configuration manager. So you don't have to go anywhere else to build true Mac policy. And we, and we deliver that with 
um, configuration items in baselines against a collection. So I'm going to be talking with a lot of configuration manager verbiage today because we live there. That's what we do. So a user initiated MDM enrollment for Mac devices. We have an MDM. We've had one for maybe five or six years when we brought in device enrollment program or DEP. Um, so we attached the MDM to configuration manager, right? Instead of putting it again, against another console and a web service somewhere else where you have to go do other things. We attach everything to configuration manager. Volume purchase program or VPP, um, applications for Apple mobile devices. We had that for the Mac. We now have it for iOS and uh, iPad OS as well. So if you have a corporate ID and token, instead of having everybody have their own Apple ID, which you can't really manage, and then procurement goes crazy. Why do they have this, right? <laughs> if you have one for the company, um, we can take care of that by synchronizing all the purchase content for the company within Configuration Manager. Device enrollment for Apple mobile devices. Again, we had that for the Mac. We've had it for years. Um, you can now enroll your mobile devices into the device enrollment program if you already have that. And, and it just basically DEP, device enrollment, if you haven't heard of it. It's where you go to your hardware reseller and say, hey, I want to do a zero touch enrollment of my devices. I really don't want my end users to have to do a lot. I just want to give them the device, right? They they open it up, they answer a question, maybe they log into a website, policy gets applied to it, and then it's tied to the MDM and configuration manager, and you own it rather than the end user doing whatever they, they think they want to do with it. So it is a zero touch enrollment for the end user um, where they basically just do their best work and you do the work you need to do to make sure the enterprise is not being, you know, kind of changed uh, in the way that an end user would like it to be, right? Uh, user account configuration during DEP enrollment. So a little bit easier way to uh, to get an account set up, right, on a device. You need to have a user account or maybe an administrative account. Uh, we can provision that. Uh, abilities to edit DEP profiles. So um, we it was kind of a one-way transition where you just blasted them out. Now we can edit those profiles, uh, making it a lot easier for admins. Automatic assignment of DEP profiles to new devices. So um, we can um, we can get that kicked off really easily. Uh, executing tax task sequences during DEP enrollment, right? It's it's hard to say task sequence, but not only is it hard to say, it's amazing, right? A task sequence with a Mac device. Are you kidding, right? So you've got all these different steps you need to apply uh, against a collection. And then, you know, you can add a policy to that. We can do that during the device enrollment program process. And then installing configuration profiles during DEP enrollment. It had been just um, the, the MDM enrollment profiles or the DEP enrollment profiles, right? So now we can just do generic um, profiles, you know, if you need to bind a Mac to AD, you want to block the App Store, um, you know, basically whatever the Apple profile is, we can we can provision that. So a lot of things coming out D9 there. All right, so this is um, some of the features, right? So we do have a couple more slides to walk through and then we'll jump into um, the rest of uh, the actual live um, virtual machine demo part of it. But this will just kind of point back to some of those those numbers we were just talking about. So this is our enrollment profile for mobile devices, right? So you've got, you know, you know, fields there for for phone uh, information, but then also user experience, MDM and configuration profiles tab where you can bring in um, some of those different features. Um, so working with um, the device enrollment program for a task sequence, in this case, we've already built out a task sequence. Now we're going to browse out and bring it in so we can then apply this to um, our group of uh, devices that we're going to be enrolling. So that that task sequence could have some of those things I just talked about. Maybe uh, we bind the Mac to Active Directory. We deploy an application or a package. Uh, we deploy more mobile config files. Maybe um, some variables or some scripts. Um, those can all be a part of that um, task sequence set of things, set of items. And I'll, I'll show you what the task sequence area looks like once we, you know, kind of progress a little bit further here. All right, configuration profiles, we're going to be talking a lot about that. That is the way you can give repeated policy management to a Mac, but during the enrollment part of, of DEP enrollment, 
you can add even more here. So um, we this one is is showing a basic compliance setting, right? So who knows what that is, but it it's probably just some you know some very basic things that you want to have um, evaluated and enforced, right? So just kind of think of it in those terms of you know. Um, um, kind of like um, discovery and remediation, right? You find a vulnerable state, then you put it into a compliant state. And basically that's what we can do with configuration items and baselines with uh, configuration profiles. All right, and here we are back to this screen. I think I actually have a duplication here, so there's nothing to see here. I got to get that out of my... Ah, out of my demo here. Sorry about that. Um, so additional uh, version 9 features here. We're into configuration manager um, and we're uh, going for automatic um, enable and automatic uh, um, assignment to new devices, right? So uh, we can have them in this this area, but we can now assign them um, that, you know, whatever device comes into the environment, we're going to automatically provision it. And then uh, some additional new enrollment profile for Mac computers. This is the, the account setting area where you can you know, create an administrative account, a standard account, or just skip it outright, right? So uh, in this instance, we're doing a, a local administrator account, and maybe it's your service service account for um, your help desk uh, so that they can get on the devices in this case. Um, and then also you've got that nice little hide account from users checkbox there. So that's that's pretty nice. And then this is the iMazing profile editor that I talked about at the very top of all the dif different V9 features. So this is a um, configuration area where you can select the Mac experience that you want to have for, you know, setting all these different features. Uh, I haven't counted them, but there's many of them. I think probably on the order of 30, maybe 40 different approved Mac um, policies that you have full you know, editing for. So what you're getting out of doing is setting XML, right? Who wants to get into, you know, whatever your editor is, uh, script editor, and build out all the conditions to manage a device? So they've basically just raised it up here for checkboxes and fields and drop downs um, that you can set. Right, and I'll I'll show you what oh, a couple of those look like once we get into the demo. But this is invoked within Configuration Manager, so when we go to create a policy and and check a box, it's going to open up and allow you to create it. And then once you close it, it pulls it into a tab sheet that is showing you the XML that you didn't have to create. And then you can save it and associate it with a baseline that goes against a collection of Macs. So it's it's basically that easy. And if anybody's doing any Mac management out there, they have to have some type of editor like this, right? To to bake into whatever their management platform is, all the policy that you would like to extend. We simply tie it into Configuration Manager. All right, little talk around uh, where we're at. Um, we do support Big Sur. We did that zero day. So um, back, uh, gosh, what was that? November last year. It was a long ramp up, right? Usually the new um, Apple um, you know, Mac OS comes out September, October, you know, and then it was November. It's like, uh, are they going to give us a new operating system? Well, the thing was, that's when M1 came out as well. So it was kind of Big Sur M1 announcement. So M1 is system on a chip or SOC. Um, you know, people still really haven't clued into that that much, but, you know, it's GPU, CPU, and RAM on a single chip. So that's that's the achievement of no bottlenecks, right? Uh, if you don't have all the different bridges and everything that 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 an Intel architecture has, you get a very fast system. Um, a lot of I I do a lot of music uh, production, and a lot of the folks that I you know hang out with and talk to were going, "What's so? What's the big deal? I don't I I want to throw you know forty eight you know ninety six gigs of RAM into you know." You know the device that they have. They may have a you know a Mac Pro or an old cheese grater. You know from days gone by, and they're saying, "Well, I won't be able to do my you know my my high, high you know my 4K video editing or or you know logic or whatever." But no 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 no. With 16 gigs of RAM, it smokes. It just flies because of that system on a chip. It's it's amazing how fast the GPU, CPU, and RAM combinations are. So it is it it's going to be amazing what what the M2, if that's what they're going to call it, is going to look like, and then Mac Pro. So it is a very fast system, and we do support it in V9. Um, it's not dead. Intel is still still a chipset for Mac. 
um, and it will be it will have coverage for at least the next two years for Apple Care, right? So it we're in a crossover period. Definitely consider M1. It's you know it's here, it's now, it's the way that Apple is going. Um, but there are still Intel chipsets out there to be had if you're still looking for those. So yeah, we could be another two to three years for for uh, Intel and ARM uh, support. So you know. Parallels is in it for the long haul. All of our products, you know, are, if not working there, are going to. I mean, Parallels device management does. Our Parallels desktop has um, uh, has an ARM or, you know, SOC M1 um, compliant uh, product, right? And at, uh, Microsoft is just coming out with 11, Windows 11 and an ARM um, capable device. So, you know, we've got the basis covered here. All right, um, this is a little bit on how we'd manage uh, endpoints that are remote. So, you know, you've got folks working on prem, they're starting to come back, but maybe you've got folks that are external. Uh, this is kind of keeping Macs in their own swim lane. We can do this um, within the DMZ um, for uh, putting up a, um, an MDM and our, that's where we keep the MDM anyway, but having IIS there, a management point and a distribution point and our proxy, internet facing proxy. That way folks external will have an agent on their device over 443 uh, TCP. Uh, they'll have a secure connection in and everything that is here in the DMZ, ooh, two mice, how did that happen? That's weird. Nope, no demo yet. Um, we can see here that this is going to be synchronized. Everything on Configuration Manager, everything that happens here internally for Mac management is going to be replicated here. So that way, once people come in, they get stuff here. You don't have to worry about them going any further into uh, the on-prem area with their off-prem Mac, right? Um, so apps, packages, policy, um, patching, uh, WSS-based patching, we can achieve that over that 443 connection. So you can kind of, you know, maybe get rid of that VPN uh, for the Mac users, knowing that they now have a secure connection, a way to be fully managed when they're not on-prem. And then when they come on-prem, we do have internal proxy that will kick over. And so there's nothing you really have to do. We, you know, we can, we can achieve this uh, through a URL that you can deliver to somebody and they can uh, get the agent installed to it securely. And then uh, then the inventory process takes over. We pull that in and then policy starts coming down and then that Mac is under, under full management. All right, so now it's time for the demo. All right, sorry about that folks. Let's move on over here into administration in configuration manager and let's go up to the top node here. All right, so yes, we're running on Parallels desktop for Mac virtual machine software here. So we're eating our own dog food. So I've got a full, you know, Windows server here, uh, full domain, you know. So I, I mean, basically think about it. What does Configuration Manager need to run within, you know, your, you know, your enterprise? Well, that's what I have running here. So SQL and Active Directory, it's a full domain. Um, and then I've got a, a Mac device that we'll take a look at once we, you know, get into the, maybe the client part of it. So um, yeah, we'll be looking at a little bit of architecture, a little bit of some of our management areas Area here and then moving into a collection, looking at that, looking at uh, policy today, um, how we can enforce that process. Uh, let me see, kind of thinking top of my head here. Oh yeah, uh, applications and packages. We have an application portal that we can put on every Mac so you can deliver available content out to those endpoints. And we used to talk about imaging. It's just not a thing anymore. Um, really wish it still was, but it's an Apple choice that they made to not do imaging. So there isn't a, a network, uh, you know, OSD pixie boot uh, for Big Sur. Catalina on down. So if you have Catalina, Mojave, High Sierra, Sierra, um, maybe two more versions, we can still do a pixie boot USB utility booting of a device into a network share, pull an image down with TAS -se sequences. It sounds like maybe you're just doing, you know, just just a, like, you know, good old image deployment at that point. Well, it is. We can do that from Catalina down. When it came to Big Sur, they they turned it all off. There is no way to do that Pixie boot experience. There's no network boot. Um, DEP, Device Enrollment Program, is where Apple would like you to live for the lifecycle management of that device, where it comes with the operating system. 
but even with that, um, what we can do and what we do on a day to day basis is with our WSUS plugin that we have our, our, um, um, our ability to patch Macs. Once a Mac hits a collection, we can patch it, right? We get Apple's um, patch uh, libraries into configuration manager synchronized in the WSUS database. We can see compliance and we'll, we'll, we'll walk through that. All right, so let's find a Mac. See how we can get it in here. We'll talk a little bit about that and then we'll go to uh, collection and see what shows up there. So every Mac's got an IP address, right? Just end of the day, kind of basic networking stuff. Every device has an IP address. We can discover those with a network crawl here. We're gonna use your boundaries and your boundary group. So, <clears throat> excuse me. In my, my little kingdom here, I've got one little boundary group and one little boundary here, one IP subnet. Um, in your, you know, in your major kingdoms that you <laughs> that you have all across the world, you know, if you're a, a school, you know, campus or university, different campuses, whatever, you're going to have lots of boundary groups, lots of boundaries. Basically, you just check the box, right? I've got Max here, I've got Max here. Of course, discount any VLANs that have, you know, any networking gear, you know, things like that. But, you know, you you probably have got some descriptions better than default, right? That says that this is a lab or this is a classroom or this is, you know, the third floor of the development building or something, right? So you kind of get the idea. We can group these based off of what you've already built into Configuration Manager and target them for discovery and enrollment, right? So, um, if we, what we're gonna do is crawl every one of those IPs. It's kind of a CSI forensic kind of thing here. We're looking for a kind of scene of the crime of a Mac fingerprint. So I, um, you know, hardware and software that identifies itself as being a Mac. If we can figure that out, then we're going to silently install our agent. No notice to the end user, no reboot. It'll enroll into configuration manager. We do a full inventory. It'll show up in a collection and then we can start dealing with the Mac, right? So that's just net network discovery does not have to be bound to AD for it to be managed. But if it is bound to Active Directory, we can go to discovery methods and Active Directory system discovery and drill into your AD structure here. And maybe you've got a, um, a Mac OU somewhere. I don't have one here, but you know, maybe you've got, you know, de Mac developers, Mac, you know, users or, you know, devices or whatever you, you want to name it. So a, a lot of times when Macs come in, uh, yeah, I know <laughs> they have, they just do. But anyway, into the IT workbench, right? You know, and there's the cut sheet, you know, 50 things you have to do to get a Mac ready. It's just pages, right, of stuff that you have to do. And once you're finished with it, a couple of days later, you, you hand it off to help desk tech and they walk it out to the floor, to the user. And they, you know, you have to do the whole, here's how you, you know, use your Mac for the first time, you know, because they were just screaming and shouting, you know, I have to have a Mac to do my job, even though a Lenovo would have worked. Yeah. So anyway, they get that Mac and now, you know, they've logged in, they're bound to AD. That Mac is going to show up in Configuration Manager. And once you bind a Mac to AD, because Configuration Manager is connected to AD, you're going to get Mac showing up in the devices group, right? So a lot of, a lot of uh, Windows administrators here in Configuration Manager will build a collection just for Macs and just kind of move them over there so they don't have to deal with them, right? So you may already have Macs in Configuration Manager and you just don't know it. Anyway, we can collect or, excuse me, connect uh, on or click on a um, OU there, bring it back into focus, right? And then um, we'll crawl every one of those uh, devices. We'll you know, add our agent to it. Just the same process as our network discovery. No notice to the end user, no reboot. It'll enroll into configuration manager, show up in a collection, and then it's, you know, it does a full inventory for it. All right, so that's AD. And again, it's optional. If you want to go with that, you, you have that option. Or maybe you just need to manually install it. You can do that. This URL, paste it onto a browser on a Mac, will download the agent. About six clicks later, it's done. It'll then pop up a screen asking to be enrolled. And you just use any AD authenticated credentials at that point, and then it'll enroll into Config Man and do its um, you know, inventory process and show up in a collection. A lot of times if you're doing a POC with us, that's one of the easiest ways to get an agent on. If you don't really want to set up discovery methods, if you don't want to do AD discovery, you just want to get an agent onto a Mac, that one is pretty simple to do.
And then we're going to work down into mobile device management, MDM, right? So um, we have a mobile device management proxy and then service uh, that we uh, put together uh, for Mac management. Uh, we have to use some Apple APNs. Uh, we can do um, signing on the on the MDM as well. So um, it is a very secure process. But again, here we are linked into configuration manager. And that's again, another one of the questions. If you're looking for Mac management, what are the other vendors doing for you in configuration manager? Device enrollment program, we also have that as well, uh, where you buy a Mac from a hardware reseller as DEP enabled, and then just hand it off to the end user, right? It didn't have to go to the IT workbench for the 50 things you have to do to get a Mac ready before you give it to the end user cut sheet, right? You just give it to the end user. Once they open it up, they log in, they may be presented with a uh, website where they um, accept the policy, and then you own it. From then on, it's your device. You add policy to it. You you know deliver apps, packages. It's an endpoint managed here in Configuration Manager. All right, uh, volume purchase program. Uh, we have that as well. Uh, we ask you associate your token and your Apple ID, and then any licenses that you've purchased. Um, you can then synchronize all that information and then deliver it with normal right click create an application right that's how we do msis exe scripts a lot of everything else that we deliver for an application we can do that as well building out a normal uh, application program and then deploying it um, either available or uh, required so um, we're going to use a lot of the built-in workflows to achieve that uh, IBCM, that's the part we talked about for remote management of a device. We have that all set up here. Um, so uh, I don't have mine set up, but I am working from home. I don't need to go anywhere. But um, if you have remote folks, this is the way to give them full endpoint management outside of the company. All right, let's look in a collection. We build out during our install of Parallels Mac Management. Um, the all Mac OS 10 systems collection. You don't have to do anything to do that. It'll just happen. And then uh, there's nothing applied to that collection. So it's not actively looking for anything until you, if you go back down to administration and set up a network discovery or an active directory discovery, right? So the, the collection may have some devices in it that, uh, you know, if you if you do have some of those discovery process going right so, but it, it won't until you actually set something up. So we're not going to, you know, we're not going to mess around with that until you're really ready to do that. The 1 thing I wanted to show in here membership rules. We use them uh, because you have to bring your devices in out of inventory. Right? And so we do the same thing. We use SQL um, and inside of our SQL query. Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Sorry about that. Where client version like PMA wildcard there, that's our Parallels Mac agent. So in inventory, we're looking for our agent. And then we're also looking for a couple of likes here, like Mac OS 10. We've got spaces in there. That is um, Big Sur. No, Catalina on down is Mac OS 10. And then when you get into Big Sur, they did a run on here for Mac OS altogether. Uh, so with those different sorts there, we can build out a collection of any Mac device, excuse me, any Mac device that you have in inventory. And then um, uh, you can also use any of the query rules here, right? You don't have to use our, our SQL query there. You could come up with your own collections, your own, you know, queries that make sense for building out maybe around um, operate, not maybe not only operating system, but maybe some other software or hardware attributes, uh, other conditions, right? That makes sense for building out your collections. The other thing we can do here is maintenance windows. You can build out this for a collection of Macs, right? So maybe mirror exactly what you're doing on the Windows side, right? So if you're if you're blocking any patching during the business day, uh, maybe just follow you know that same tab sheet for the Windows side, you know, and, and name it Mac whatever, and then you know set the same settings so that way you know you don't patch anybody, reboot them, you know, when they're working on you know very important stuff because that's what Mac people do. All right, there we go. So that's our collection. Here we go. Let's take a look. Got a couple of things in here. So I do have a, um, a network discovery process going on and I, 
uh, found that I have another device here, uh, but it didn't uh, didn't give me a, a name. It doesn't show that it has a client and it's not active, doesn't even show operating system. So I got so far, but I couldn't get any further, which means I probably didn't have an admin account for this device. Maybe the service account, and, you know, the, the, uh, the device account that, you know, help desk would get onto a device. It wasn't pre present on this Mac, so I couldn't really get into it. Uh, we, what we do is we connect over, um, over FTP uh, port 22 and uh, that then gives us administrative rights to to put an agent onto a device. So maybe that wasn't set up. Uh, there could be other conditions. Maybe it was a uh, a firewall issue, um, you know, some other condition. But at least it found it. So very first time, if you set up a network discovery, you'll probably find a lot of stuff that you really weren't uh, <laughs> weren't aware of, right? They usually that first time discovery uh, for our new customers or our POC customers is pretty telling, you know, because they thought, oh, yeah, well, let's just get a license, you know, for 100 devices, right? And come to find out they had 150, 160, you know, where did these devices, these rogue devices come from? How did they get on my network, right? So, um, you know, just be prepared that, that that could happen. So in this case, I do have um, a recognized device here. It is a computer. It looks like I do have a client. It is active. And there's the operating system. So right-click and just scroll forever there and then i just selected that uh, there's a lot of things that that will apply here but a lot of things that won't right because it's not a mac device right so there are I mean, a windows device so there's a lot of windows attributes here uh that that won't have any relevance but this is really nice to see right because if you if you do have a hundred different uh mac devices what operating systems are they running on and maybe you need to standardize on one um or maybe there is a real reason why that user has an older operating system. Maybe there's um, Mac software that will only run on an older version, especially if you're in, in a school, uh, you may have different labs, right? And you have to run, you know, certain versions of Mac OS for, for some, you know, you know, some really spendy software that doesn't ever get updated. Um, so good to see that. But then down below here, right? Policy, heartbeat, hardware scan, we bring all that information in. So we're using the same policy cycle, the same hardware cycle, the same kind of in general cycle that, that you set up for Windows devices. We're going to we're going to give that over to Mac. So once they're discovered, uh, you're going to get some health information about the device to know. Well, yeah, if I haven't seen a policy request, you know, maybe for 10 or 15 days, um, we better check that out, right? So it's good to see all this stuff here. Let's do a bit of right-click investigation. We do have some tools we've added here for, for right-click usage. Uh, so our Parallels Mac management tools. We can even do this up at the collection level, but you get a smaller kind of thinner set of things you can do, um, you know, but uh, yeah, so we, we can reach out and touch those devices. So connect over VNC, we use a uh, tight VNC, so we can remote into a device for remote management. So this isn't shadowing or screen sharing. The end user isn't gonna see the Mac magically moving around on the screen. Um, this is for an administrator who doesn't wanna walk out there, maybe can't walk out there. It, you know, help desk could possibly do that, but you as an administrator are sitting at your console and that's where you work, right? You, you've you made it to the place, right? You've got the credentials, you've got the paper, you are a console administrator. What? I don't walk, <laughs> I don't go anywhere. I go to my console, right? And then you invoke this and you get a login screen. You're, it's like you were sitting at that Mac, right? And you go log in and you can see what do you need to see at administrative level, maybe remove some things, add some things, do your work, get in, get out, you're done, right? So yeah, there are other tools that will do a, a, a screen share. Uh, we, we don't do that. We just give an administrator in the console a way to get to the device. SSH is putty, so we can get out to terminal, do anything from there that we need to do. I mean, if it can shut it down, reboot it, uh, take somebody out of root down to standard, let's just bypass administrative profile, get them into a standard user, you could do that as well. So anything that a terminal command can do, you can do it remotely right here in the console. Machine policy retrieval and evaluation cycle is the same thing that happens on Windows devices. You can invoke that um, ad hoc. I mean, 
configuration manager admins have spidey sense. We, you know, you you have this awareness, <laughs> something isn't right, right? And you need to make sure that your policy is being evaluated, that it's discovery remediation, that it's being enforced. So that basically that's what it is as an ad hoc way to make sure policy kicks off and everything's back the way it should be. Now, again, as I mentioned, we follow the configuration manager policy cycle. So whatever happens with your Windows devices, we're going to do the same thing. But this here, again, is for that, that secondary, you know, I just need to run it. A request inventory update. So if something happens on the Mac for maybe some software added uh, sneaker net, somebody, you know, maybe you don't block USB ports, but you could with a policy. Um, maybe they, you know, plugged in a USB drive, a USB stick, they installed something, maybe they downloaded something. Um, you can pull that inventory in and then you can see it uh, in your inventory reporting. Executing scripts, bash, Python, Ruby, terminal commands, basically anything you want to throw at it. Uh, maybe you've developed a, a bash script or something. Um, here's all the different file types that we support. Uh, point to the file, bring it in, and then um, we can execute that. Uh, cut and paste, right? I can go out to Google with the best of them, whatever the, uh, the, the script interpreter is that'll run on a Mac. If I can cut it and paste it, maybe test it on a Mac, bring it back here and go, yep, this is what I want to blast out. This is only going to affect one Mac. You could go back up here to the top and right click and do the script, um, execute script against the entire collection, which might be better. Then you can affect all those Macs with whatever change that you want to make. And then you've got some options. You can run it with administrative privileges. Um, you can uh, use administrative accounts or specify an AD account, or you can just browse into AD and pull in some creds there. And then you can blast this out against the Mac, or as I mentioned, against the entire collection of Macs. Make some major changes with that one, you can. All right, sounded like Yoda there. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Executing, we did that. Install Parallels Mac Client, right? So in the background here, maybe if this had a name, I could. I probably had an admin account, and there was some some issue with it. it if if it didn't show any, if it did show yes that it had a client, but ac active was either if empty or said not active. Yeah, well, maybe I could right click and redeploy my agent, right? So I can hit that. And then I've got some options here for different accounts, the local admin account, or again, we can browse into AD, pull in, and if that Mac is bound to AD, right, we can pull creds for it. Now we've got some options, right? Install the Mac client, even if it's already installed. So that would be for, right, an unhealthy Mac, right? It has an agent, but it's not reporting in, right? Or maybe you just don't care. Um, you know, that's that's what you want to do there. But if you do care, you may want to uninstall it first. Let's be nice and then get a clean install going. And then, you know, you've got a clean agent and then it'll report back in client activity. It'll say active client. Yes. And then everything's right in the world. Right. So here you can do some remote um, installation. This is also good for the Macs that have been bound to AD, but are just sitting under either devices or if you're, you know, if your administrators have built a, a Mac collection that they just kind of push everything into and just deny that they have Macs, they're in Mac denial. <clears throat> Right, so you could go to that collection, right click on it and install our agent, right? If it's already bound to AD, it's been discovered, right? So that, that makes it pretty easy. All right, some additional right clicks. Let's go down here and take a look. Um, wipe and lock, this is Apple's wipe and lock, right? For configuration manager for Windows, uh, MBAM, uh, well, just wipe and lock in general, not in BAM. I'm thinking of File Vault for the equivalent here, but uh, just uh, for wiping and locking, that's built in for you guys on the Windows side. For a Mac, it has to come from an MDM, right? So we put our MDM inside the uh, the DMZ so we can, we can affect a Mac internally, we can affect a Mac externally. So if somebody is leaving the company and they decide, oh, thank you for my Mac, it was a nice parting gift, but you said, no, we sent you a box, right? We want you to ship it back so we can wipe it and put new OS on it and give it to somebody else. But they thought, no, I, I think I think this was a gift, right? <laughs> no, we're gonna wipe it and we're gonna lock it. So lock code uh, is a six digit number. Um, anything you come up with, we escrow that number. Um, so this will, this will be the way you can get back onto that device. They can't use an old password. They can't use a file vault key. There's no way unless they have the six digit code to actually get back onto that device. And then we wipe it, 
right? Turn it into a metal brick. Uh, it is no longer usable. There's no content on it. Um, and if they can't log into it, it is just a metal brick. In new T2, T2 Max uh, with the TPM arrangement and just the, the whole security around the, the T2 Mac architecture, uh, if you take out uh, the hard drive, in, in an incorrect process, it'll brick it. So, you know, if they think, oh, I'm just going to put in a, you know, a new hard drive into this and it's mine, yeah, they don't tell them this, right? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we can protect the device and hopefully they're going to ship it back. We've got good corporate citizens, but, you know, it does happen from time to time. All right, so those are our right clicks. Let's go up here to start and resource explore and see what's on this device. Do, 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 hardware. All right. So it's kind of funny. Everything on the Mac is going to be under hardware, even when you get down to installed applications, but cool stuff here, right? So computer system, I'm going to double click on this. We get a nice little page here. We can see a little bit better. Uh, there's the name of the device do, 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 operating system, Mac OS 10, 15. So this one's, uh, I think I'm on Catalina on this one. Um, model. Uh, this this should say something different, but because it's a virtual machine, um, so again, we're eating our own dog food here. Um, I don't have a hardware um, that I'm looking at. I'm looking at a virtual machine. So it does even tell you that. Kind of interesting, we can deploy uh, virtual machines out of Configuration Manager to Max. So you could deploy a Windows operating system onto a Mac out of configuration manager with our, our process. And then it would it would report on it here in configuration manager. All right, so that's a little bit on uh, computer systems. Let's look at file vault. This one is not enabled. So unknown key type, and that's the volume that could be, uh, be decrypted or encrypted. Uh, so this is the 30,000 foot look, is it or isn't it, right? Does it have uh, file vault or not? Um, I'll show you what the policy looks like and how we can push that out. So just at a quick glance, if you okay, oh no, yeah, we got to get this one encrypted. So, you know, you need to get some policy out to that device. Installed applications, everything inventoried off this device, every policy cycle um, could have an update, right? Depends on what that user is doing, uh, what software they're installing or removing. Um, you can go through here. I don't think I've added anything. This is a relatively new virtual machine for me. Um, I don't think I have Edge on here. No, I do not. But I think that I put on, did I put Chrome? Nope, I didn't even put Chrome on there. Anyway, you, know, you can, as you can see, you could filter through there and maybe you were looking for some endpoint protection that wasn't uh, listed in your software uh, list right here, right? So this is everything inventoried from the Mac. You could go to monitoring, to reporting. Uh, you could use a lot of the built-in reports to see what's on the Mac. Um, you could create your own reports. We've got KB articles that show how to create a, you know, all the, you know, properties around building a report um, against your uh, SQL DB, your, your site code DB, uh, because we pull this stuff from the same tables that are in your site code DB, um, you know, because there's there's table structure for software, right? Uh, add, remove programs, programs and features. That's where we're gonna place all this stuff. I mean, we're taking all this from your site code DB. There's a home for it, you know? So while a Mac may be that unknown black box of, you know, can I get it out of my enterprise? Um, it is, it's a known entity, you know, there's places within configuration manager and in your site code DB, we can fully uh, take care of it. All right, so network login profile. This one's nice, especially for our remote work uh, that we've got going on to see who's been on that device, right? So the end user is working around the kitchen table remotely from home, but then you're starting to see, you know, other names here that don't follow your naming convention for logins, right? So they've added some logins uh, for their family members, and now they're starting to show up here. Right, so I've got an administrative account. You know, that's what I use for my demos. I do have a root account, but you know, this by and large, if it is a, an end user, should follow your naming convention for whatever your login, you know, should look like. Then you can see last log on, log off times, how many times they've been on the device. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a relatively new uh, virtual machine for me, so I haven't been uh, jumping onto it that often. But it is good to see, right? You, you get some asset intelligence here of you know, who's who's on here. And then you can take some action to say, hey, folks, you know, this really is a business ad set. We'd appreciate it, you know, if other people didn't get on there. And there's ways to block that. All right, operating system, uh, there we go. Um, 
1015 is on there, right? So, you know, it's just a lot of the information you may need to know as an ad administrator. You just can't walk out there and touch every device and maybe help desk can either. So having this remote information is very important. Now, under hardware history, we're going to do the same thing that's up here, but this will be for, eh, I think, I think um, Microsoft collects about three months worth of information. So if we were to go under installed applications, uh, this has really just got, um, you know, a couple of days of uh, July and a little bit of June in here. But yeah, you could go back over three months worth of history, uh, maybe see new items since last inventory collection. There's also another one, uh, items that haven't changed, but I don't think I've got that here because I haven't had it that long. And then every once in a while, you'll see a black line through something that somebody deleted. Maybe it was for some, you know, software that should be on this device, right? And you need to get it back out onto it. So this gives you a, a way, again, that you didn't have to walk out there, didn't have to talk to anybody. You just did a, you know, look up here to see. Uh, and again, this follows the inventory cycle that happens for everything. So this will always be up to date. All right, so that's um, Resource Explorer. Another right click, let's look at properties. All right, so there we go. Um, let's see, wipe and lock information is here. I don't have anything under wipe and lock, but you could come back and get an unlock code, copy to clipboard, hand it to your trusted help desk associate. They could unlock the device. Maybe somebody did return it, or maybe you do need to unlock it for whatever reason. You know, maybe you locked a live device and you need to unlock it now. You could do that. Uh, File Vault 2, we would either have a personal or institutional key. I have neither. Again, you could copy to clipboard, hand it to a trusted help desk associate. They could decrypt it. Maybe they can help somebody log in. They had a proper vacation, proper holiday. They came back in, completely forgot their credentials. Ah, uh, yeah. Never happened to me. Um, and then you can log in with this um, institutional personal key and then have them reset a password, right? So helpful for those cases. Anything we've pushed out to the device? Oh yeah, I could have looked on for inventory for Firefox. Um, I've got WinZip, Evernote uh, on my Mac. Uh, this would show up uh, software updates, uh, variables, uh, you know, any patching software packages, you know, just tons of stuff. Anything that gets gets deployed to the device um, will show up here. And then the good old general tab, dates, times, when, where kind of stuff. Uh, there's our Parallels version 9 agent. Uh, let's see what else is in here. IPv4 and 6 addresses. Depends on what you have, right? Um, we do support both. Um, so if you are IPv6 only shop, um, that'll be showing there. Let's see what else. Um, we get our name for the device. There's the operating system. Um, yeah, just a lot of the same stuff you normally see, right? So that's a collection look. We live and die in our collections, right? You could be patching against it. You could be throwing applications, policy, whatever for a Mac, right? We don't put anything on the collection first time when we install. We wait for you to decide what you want to put on it. So it is a, a nice clean collection. All right, let's move down into compliance settings. Do, do, do. We're going to look at um, probably one of the biggest areas here. This is the black box area, right? People don't know what's on a Mac. They know that, you know, it's kind of a thing that's out there. People screamed and shout, shouted for their, for their Mac. They had to have it for marketing or development or whatever it was. But now it's here, right? What do we do to make it look like a Windows endpoint, or how do we how do we get it into a baseline of protection? Well, that's what we're going to look at here. Um, well, I've got a couple one a couple in here. I'm blocking pref panes. That's a really easy one. Um, and then um, what we do to achieve that is Mac OS iOS configuration profile. We can give it a name, a description. Um, use MDM um, system profile. Before we even get to there, we're going to hit the edit button. This is where we can pull up uh, the iMazing profile editor. This is where we can build out the policy that will give us ownership of this device like we have for our Windows devices. Instead of having a uh, group policy, we've got mobile config files and profiles uh, for policy enforcement. So the one that I have um, in my um, in my uh, policy area behind the screen here is for uh, the app store. So say, you know, people, you know, if you can deploy an app in a package out of configuration manager, why do people need to go to the app store? Uh, if you have volume purchase program, you even have another way of getting content to users. So there really isn't a need for anybody to go out there. So let's make that require an admin. 
uh, well, maybe we're nice and we let them go out there, but they can only do software updates, right? End users always say, well, yeah, I got to go to the app store. I got to get my Mac patched. Don't you want me to have an updated patched Mac, right? And they get out to the app store and that's the furthest thing from their mind, right? They're downloading the game of the day. You know, they're, <laughs> that's what they're out there for. Uh, they're getting, you know, whatever software utilities that probably don't meet the enterprise requirements of, you know, of your organization. So, so yeah, you could restrict to updates where they can update it. But even then, we have that patching capability in Configuration Manager for Mac. So there really isn't a, a reason for them to be out there. So yeah, let's let's make sure that they're a standard user and you have to be an admin to do any installs, right? So this could be a mobile config file. And what we simply do at this point, if I can get this high enough on the screen, is say, okay, and there you go. It brings all that XML that you didn't have to create into focus here. And we give it a name, a description, um, system, and use MDM. Um, that way we can have full enforcement here out of Configuration Manager without the end user being able to remove it. It'll have the remediation, right? The check uh, that discovery and remediation has. So it'll always make sure that it is enforced. Uh, so that's what's key about having system as root and then MDM for the enforcement. So right once we hit OK and bring it back in, that's what I already have here for blocking pref panes. And then in my baseline, I've got a Corp Mac policy. And then for properties, it's the only thing that, that I have in there for my evaluation condition is blocking pref panes. Right. But you'd probably want to consider, you know, um, you know, screensaver lockout, um, you know, whatever it is, uh, policy that you need to have here. And that iMazing profile editor is just filled full of Mac policy. Uh, let's see if I can, where are you, iMazing? I wanna give a little bit more overview of that if, uh, bear with me here. So all these flat icons, these are all Mac approved, right? So the XML behind it is everything that they've blessed and said, yep, this is exactly how you manage a Mac. Every one of these things could play into how you manage your devices. Then down below here, available application domains gives us some community-based um, policy that have been built out. You know, so Firefox, you know, who would ever deploy that without, you know, locking it down? Well, here's how you lock it down. Uh, you've got all these different settings like you would in the configuration of Firefox uh, to set this as policy that can be enforced across every instance of Firefox that you deploy. So right, deploy Firefox as a DMG, deploy this policy. However, you need to set this up with all the bookmarks, you know, with all the networking settings, TLS, whatever it is, and then it becomes a fully managed instance of Firefox to meet your requirements, right? So this, again, was community developed, right? You can go out to the iMazing website. There's probably some uh, GitHub resources as well. Um, well, there are for showing you how you can build your own policy uh, and add it here. Uh, so even into Google, into Microsoft, uh, there's all kinds of titles here that you could be uh, delivering for OneNote and uh, for some other you know, Microsoft policies here. Oh, just kind of flew past those, right? So uh, Microsoft Word, Remote Desktop, a bunch of different things there. Um, yeah, Nomad is in here. This is the open source version of No More AD. So you can synchronize uh, AD logins with this. Uh, just a lot of cool stuff in here that people have developed uh, and then they make that available. So not only do you get Apple's blessed, you know, kind of official policy, you can come down here and get others. And then like I mentioned out on GitHub, there's a repository of a lot of uh, Mac admins work that they put together. Um, Oh, I, I want to cancel that um, of all their work. And you could download their profiles after looking at the XML and decide if that's what you want to do or not. So that's how we build out policy for for Max. And that could be, you know, as you could have multiple, um, you know, baselines, right? You could have one for general users, corporate users. You could have one for developers, one for your marketing team, you know, whatever way you want to manage those with to do whatever degree, right? And some folks will need a lot of management. Some people, maybe you just leave open. Um, because they're developing and, you know, they may have rights to do things that other people don't. All right, so that's uh, configuration items, baselines. Here's how we do file vault. Pretty easy. Uh, name description and what do you want to do? Personal key is the randomized per device key. 
um, that you can deploy out. Each device will have its own unique key. We escrow it. You can pull that key back. Institutional, do a little bit of command line work. It's about six steps. Um, it'll build the keychain uh, item that we pull out. It's a .cer file. And once you have that CER file, after you've exported it out of keychain, then you've got something you can throw into a policy. Again, this can go into a baseline and then the um, the user will at login be prompted uh, to enforce file vault on their device. If they say yes, good, great, it'll go through the enforcement process. It allowed them to say, you know, we're now enforcing file vault on your Mac. Uh, you can continue, say yes, you know, or you can wait, you know, for whatever time it takes. Um, or uh, if they say no at the very outset, like, you know, we give them the option to say yes or no, but if they say no, it brings them back to the login screen. So they really don't have a reason, you know, they, they have to get it uh, enforced. So that's um, that's file vault. All right, let's look at apps and packages. We're getting up to the top of the hour here. Just want to let you know, time check. We are going to go over a couple of minutes. Uh, hope you can hang out with me here. Uh, so let's go here. Applications, right click, create an application. We use the same right click, create an application wizard. Of course, it's not an MSI, right? We have Mac OS 10. We also have Apple Volume Purchase Program for Mac OS or Apple VPP application. This would be for iOS. I think I need to talk to our devs so they can put iOS or iPad OS on there, right? So if you've already downloaded, synchronized your Apple ID and token for Volume Purchase Program, then you can build out um, that content to be delivered. But we're going to be talking about Mac OS here, right? So let's browse and we think we're going to find maybe a DMG, PKG, you know, uh, no, it says CMAC. Microsoft added some features here that give us detection methods. Those are kind of important, really on the Windows side, right? For, you know, is this the old app? Is this the new app or is this the same app, right? So we get some logic uh, for installing or maybe not installing it, right? Mac, Payloads don't have that. They're not even thinking about that. So um, Microsoft built this utility that give detection methods. So CMAP util is the is the little utility. We put that on a Mac, mount it, and then uh, we can run a terminal command that it's got three arguments in it. Basically, where's the app? Where do you want to put it? And the um, the detection method switch, right? And then you run that against a DMG, PKG, uh, MPKG, whatever it is. Our admin guide walks through this entire process. So then about, you know, 10, 15 seconds later, you've got a new um, extension. So right there, I've got my app.cmac. That's been converted over into a CMAC with detection methods. So whatever version this is, um, it will, um, it will check the the one you know being installed to the one that is installed to make sure that it, it either will can bypass it or install it right so that's the beauty of detection methods gives us some logic so then it's just next 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 and once it's done uh, we've got a, a fully built out program that we can then deploy and then deployment uh, for applications can, can go a couple of ways. We can have them required or we can have them available. The nice thing about available is then we can deploy this to our Macs. Let's see here, I've got Catalina going. I'm gonna open up our application portal. This gets installed to every Mac. Uh, so when our agent gets installed, it also installs this. Uh, so we can deliver available applications that the, uh, the user can can decide on, right? We give the install the administrative rights, not the user. So this could be filled full of Microsoft apps, you know, whatever, you know, a, you know Corel Draw, Adobe Creative Suite, you know, WinZip like I've got here, whatever it is, you can create your own containers, backup and configuration manager. Um, and then fill it full of whatever applications, packages. We can do packages only if they're task sequences, non-OSD task sequences. So this can become a, a really nice utility area for not only applications, but packages. You can bind a Mac to Active Directory and have a link here to do that. Um, let's see what else. Um, variables, scripts could all be in here. You could have a utility folder with things that help end users, you know, and not well self-diagnosed to some degree, but maybe fix some issues directed by help desk, right? So this could not only be where they get their apps, but maybe where they can get their Mac back into a healthy state or or make some changes to it, right? So um, 
uh, let me see, high order things again here, right? Apps and packages through non-OSD task sequences, uh, admin rights um, for the app, not the user, hit the install button, it installs. Now, once we install it, maybe they wanna come back and uninstall it, they can do that. With building out the command line for this installer, if you put in a dash RM for remove, then once it's installed, you can come back and do an uninstall, right? So that gets out of having a help desk call or somebody coming by the desk say, ah, how do I remove this, right? I mean, it's so unelegant, right? And on a Mac, you drag something to the recycle bin and to uninstall it, right? We even have uninstall capabilities in Configuration Manager for Mac. So if you wanted to do kind of an enterprise uninstall, you could have an uninstall collection, you can remove it. So there are ways to do that as well. All right, so that's that's how we use utilize the application portal. Since we're here, let's take a look at system preferences. There's our Parallels Mac device agent uh, connection times. We've got our, our main proxy listed here. I don't have an IBCM proxy, so that's not listed there. There's my version. Uh, let me see, certificates. Macs have to have certificates in a Microsoft environment. Uh, so if you don't have PKI, we can support and deliver a certificate for you. If you do have PKI, you would just supply those. We would need a web certificate and a device certificate. Um, and we show you how to create those. And it just follows a Microsoft article, basically, that we've pulled into our documentation for building out those certificates. All right, then we can uh, refresh, connect up to Configuration Manager. Uh, mine failed, I need to reboot something. Um, but that way we can see, you know, is there any new policy to bring down? Uh, we can pull or push inventory up, uh, back up into Configuration Manager. And then I only have one real true policy on here, so I'm blocking the App Store. I don't have permission. That's what my one policy was uh, that I had for a configuration item. So back again here in uh, System Preferences, here's the Profile Medallion. And this is what gives me full rights to manage this Mac, my Parallels MDM Configuration Profile. So this was accepted. Uh, very first time I logged in, and uh, once it was, now I own it as an administrator. Um, wipe it, lock it, erase it, you know, all these different types of restrictions uh, tied to this MDM policy. So there's my disabled Mac App Store. Um, somebody before me built a policy for this Parallels Mac client um, configuration, so there are some steps taken to configure the, the agent into a way that made sense. All right, so that's uh, that's what uh, Catalina looks like with um, some software with uh, some policy. All right, packages. No need to convert. Don't have to do anything. Create a package. We use the same wizard. Give it a name description. This package contains source files. Browse out, find it, pull it in. DMG PKG ISO.sh file. You could completely script an install, kind of like detection methods. The .sh file could have you know, is the old app here, right? So discover, if is there an old DMG? If it is, delete the DMG as another script within that, that uh, bash file. And then um, install the new one, license it, uh, have uh, logs taken, right? That could all be a part of the scripted process. That was for one of our customers who built that as a .sh deployment process. So yeah, not only can you do the fully, you know, nice DMGs or PKGs, uh, you know, whatever you can, ISOs, you can, you can script it out if you want to do that as well. So next, 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 finish it out on deployment. Um, it's uh, for packages. They're kind of brain dead. They don't give you um, an available. You have to go with required. Uh, you can use administrative rights or you can use user context, right? Where it pops up and they go, oh, wait a minute. Uh, was I getting a software deployment today, right? Or you can do it quiet with the quiet switch and administrative rights. Then it just silently installs in the background and it's ready to run, right? So you do have options. Uh, let's take a look at Firefox and let's see here, program. Here is my command line. So Firefox, DMG. Um, DMGs, right? Um, Mac payloads are just... Um, like uh, archive files. Inside of it is the actual application, the .app. So we're mounting the DMG, gonna pull out the app, and we're going to put it into the application folder, right? And this one, I don't have the dash RM in here. So this is a one-way delivery. But if I had, yeah, if I had that dash RM in here, the end user could remove it if, if you wanted to give them rights to do that. Maybe there's some software that you just need to push out there and you don't want them to remove it, right? So leaving that dash RM is, is kind of a good thing in some sense. In our administrative 
uh, um, admin guide for Parallels Device Management. We've got sections on everything for the how-to part of this, right? We've got a deployment guide, shows you how to configure, preset everything for servers, but then we've got a admin document that shows you how to build apps, packages, policy, um, you know, MDM packages, you know, uh, wipe and lock, all that stuff. It's, it's all in there, so all the how-tos are in our administrative guide. All right, so that's apps, packages. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's talk about software updates, and then that'll be it for us today, folks. Um, we have a SUP role, software update point role that we synchronize with Apple's software servers. That gives us the ability uh, to synchronize in um, all their products. So we're not a third-party patcher. We patch Max. So software updates, you know, application updates, OS updates, security patches, that's the kind of stuff that we can patch, right? And we get the telemetry from the device, right, to see um, is it compliant, required, not required, or unknown? Well, this one's unknown. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see what's what's available here for Catalina. I don't have anything to update. I did have the most current version of Catalina, so I don't have anything in there. Well, let's say I did have something to update, right? So right click and then if it if this did say required with a one on it, of course it would say required down here. Pie chart would change as well. Then we knew what we needed to patch, right? Again, the Mac is a black hole. It's like, what do I need to do with it? Well, this is a place where we're getting some, some uh, software patching intelligence of, you know, our Mac has an agent, right? It's got the parallels agent on it. So we're reporting in inventory. So that means we can report in anything that's been patched or not patched. Then the Mac itself is always connected to Apple for the same process of knowing, you know, does it need an update? Does it need a software, you know, OS update or a security patch or an application update? We can bring all that telemetry up into Configuration Manager and have it evaluated to know if your device needs to be patched, right? So again, if I had a compliant or excuse me, a non-compliant or required, I would simply right click and I would create a software update group. I could even use an ADR for automated deployment rules. And then you would be able to patch that device uh, against a collection of Macs. It makes it pretty easy. So patch Tuesday for a Mac isn't every Tuesday. It's going to be probably every three to four weeks uh, whenever Mac OS is updated, maybe even longer. Um, so, um, but at least you've got a way here to come in and see, do I really need to patch anything? Uh, it's no longer kind of a, you know, you know, waiting for the end user to do something. And we can fully own this. We can put a configuration item on the Mac that would not allow them to go to the App Store. It would make this device fully patchable by you and not by them. So that's what you're able to achieve here. All right, so that's software updates. Again, I said uh, we're not doing any image deployment, but if you are using older operating systems like Catalina, Mojave, High Sierra, you can still do it, right? And we can even do task sequences. But this is good for, um, you know, the task sequence side of things for Macs because, um, you know, we can create an OS 10 task sequence, a non-OSD task sequence, and then use it for, uh, mobile device management, or just against a collection of Macs if there's something we want to deploy to it. So apply configuration profile. This is the policy, right, that can you know, you know, give you the granular support of your Mac, the mobile config file experience, right? We're not going to apply an app. We're not going to, excuse me, apply an image or a capture one, but we can execute scripts. Again, bash, Python, Ruby, terminal commands. We can either cut and paste or we can load the script in. Uh, then we also can, um, yeah, I, I, we can still format and partition. Maybe you need to DOD wipe um, a, a device, right? So for those not from the US, DOD stands for Department of Defense. So our or, you know, Department of Defense has standards for any device on their network. If you format it and partition it, it has to be X amount of times. I don't, I don't know what it is, 50, 100, I don't know. Um, but you could load that up with format and partition. Here's where you're going to get a little more benefit, uh, installing an app or a package. We simply browse uh, into the application area um, and pull those in, and then we can use a task sequence to push them out. Same thing for packages. 
find whatever package you've already built and you can do that. Here's another one really nice, binding a Mac to, to a domain. Maybe that's the only thing you're going to do. Uh, you wanna throw that against a collection. Maybe you've got your Mac marketing team in a collection and you want them to be bound to a marketing OU, right? So browse in, find your OU, and then you can browse in, find um, the marketing OU that would be built in under computers or wherever you have it. And then they would you know, throw this against the Mac marketing collection and then that would bind them. So you have to set administrative accounts here that have permissions to join the device. So an account, and a password. Um, you can also add, add additional groups. So that would maybe be help desk, right? Maybe you've got uh, folks that can walk out to the desk if they're doing that these days, right? Um, then you can add their uh, help desk administrative group there out of AD. This one's always suggested create mobile accounts at login. Um, this gives you better capabilities. I mean, with that person goes mobile on a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, they have a cache set of credentials, but this, this really helps out. All right, so that's uh, task sequences. We can throw those against non-OSD uh, deliveries, right, for MDM enforcement, for uh, just general enforcement against a collection outside of MDM. Uh, but again, if you are wanting to deploy um, Catalina as an image, uh, Mojave as an image, High Sierra, Sierra, and a couple others, we can still do that as a OSD. We have an OSD image builder uh, that will allow you to create a boot and a restore. We can bring those images in. We can push them to a distribution point, right? So that way, when you network boot, you can pull it down from the distribution point and then leverage task sequences against it. You know, so give it a name uh, in our task sequence editor, um, you know, then you can bind it to AD, add apps, packages, policy, scripts, whatever. All right, that is it. I will say thank you. Really appreciate your time. Hanging out 20 minutes past the hour, you're champions. So thank you for, for doing that. And you're champions for administrating in these crazy times. Yes, I hate saying that, but thank you. Um, I we, we appreciate what you do for your enterprises, being out there and taking care of folks. So um, you know, take care. And I know you want to take care of your people. That's the highest thing on our, our admin list. Um, we're here for the, for the whole team, the company and our users. So yeah, go out there and manage well and, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Well, thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.